Kia ora team, my name's Ben, now let's talk COPD. First of all, what is it? So, chronic, long-term, progressive, obstructive, so this is a problem getting air out of our lungs, pulmonary, lungs, and disease or disorder. So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This means basically we've got a progressive disease and we're gonna get, oh God, I've already said it, sweet. Moving on. It's made primarily of two conditions and you can have a mixture of both. Let's break down each one of them. So emphysema, first of all, is destruction of alveolar walls and capillaries causing enlarged air spaces. So when we think of emphysema, we think alveoli. So what happens? We get smoking, pollution, or an irritant coming down into our alveola, our little air sacs, and we get an immune response. So this is good. If we have a pathogen, if we've got a problem, it's good to recruit our immune system and fight that problem. Right, so our neutrophils, white blood cells, release elastase which is an enzyme that helps, it's going to help break down the pathogen, kill the problem. Unfortunately, if we, if we smoke, or if we've got a congenital alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, then we don't have this thing, alpha-1 antitrypsin. Its job is to come in and inhibit elastase to say, your work is done, calm down, and you can stop now. If we don't have this, because we smoke, or we're unlucky enough to have a deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin, then our elastase runs riot. So we get alveolar damage. We start breaking down our alveoli. A normal healthy alveola will have lots and lots of air balloons at the end of our airways. And this is good, because if you've got lots of balls, then they've got good surface area. Lots of little balls have a lot more surface area than one big ball. You can see this would be um, alveolar in emphysema where all the inner walls have broken down and we're just left with one. The walls of the alveolus, they would have capillaries around them and this is good because now we've got room for gas exchange. If we break down those alveolar walls, then we also lose the capillaries and lose the gas exchange. Straight away, that's a problem without emphysema. We're going to get gas trapping. If we lose that elasticity, what happens is elasticity is the recoil. So we breathe in, we open up our air sacs, and then we get this elastic recoil so that air leaves our lung. If we have this damage, if elastase takes away our elastic recoil, now we breathe in, our alveoli are full with air, but if they don't have that recoil, air gets trapped inside because we're not elastically snapping them closed again. That's a problem. Gas trapped inside. Dynamic airway collapse. I hear you saying, I thought you said emphysema was about the alveolar problems. Why are we now talking about the airway? Well, as we get elastic recoil of our alveoli, of our air sacs, then we've got our small airways on the other side. They kind of get pulled open as our alveoli snap down. So our elastic recoil of our alveoli helps to pull and keep our airways open. Nice. So if we lose that, we also get the collapse of the small airways. Um, then we're going to get hyperinflation. So our patients are going to end up with a barrel chest, a hyperinflated chest, because if our alveoli are now big and we can't get the gas, the air out, then we're going to get more and more and more inflation. Lovely. Okay. The other disease that also makes up COPD in a, in a certain balance is chronic bronchitis. So chronic bronchitis is where we have a productive cough for greater than three months over the past greater than two years.
So what happens with this one? We get smoking and we get an irritant, and this triggers goblet cell hyperplasia. Our goblet cells are the ones that create mucus, which normally is a good thing. We want some mucus in our airways, because if then we get a pathogen coming in, or some dust particles, anything, then we got cilia, which are like little hairs, and they can keep flicking like this, which grabs the mucus with our particle of whatever we want to get rid of, and kind of flicks it away, so then we can spit it out or cough it up. But if we get excess mucus production, then our airway tubes, if they get full of mucus, now it's gonna, we're going to have trouble getting air flowing between them, inside them. Uh, our irritant will also cause inflammation. Inflammation is also going to narrow the lumen or the inside bit, again making it harder to get air out. Ciliary dysfunction. So remember our cilia, those were the little hairs that were kind of doing this to pull the mucus out so we can cough out and get rid of any foreign matter. When we smoke, we stop them from working. So now, instead of constantly clearing mucus and debris out, it now starts to build up and get stuck in our lungs. So we've got poor clearance, and if we've got all this mucus just hanging around, we've got a greater chance of getting an infection. So our secretions accumulate and build up, and our airways get obstructed, and we get VQ mismatch. So V for ventilation, which is how much air we can get through, and Q is for perfusion quotient, or how much blood. So we're still fine at getting blood through to our alveoli, but we're going to struggle to get air into our alveoli. So that's our chronic bronchitis. So COPD is going to be a mixture of these. Emphysema, problem with our alveoli, air sacs, and chronic bronchitis, problem with our bronchioles, airways. So problem getting air out of our lungs. All right, team, happy studying.